Have you ever heard of this very typical British phrase, stick the kettle on? Right, cup of tea? Yeah, yeah, go right, on. I'll stick the kettle on. Then. It means turn the kettle on. And when we're talking about a kettle, we're talking about this. And we turn it on so we can boil the water. And then we make our tea. Tea is very important to British people and to me. So you'll notice that normally we say put the kettle on and that means turn the kettle on, give it power. So to put something on is usually a pretty good replacement for turn something on. To put something on is to turn something on. So we're giving something power. For example, we can put on the TV, we can put on the radio, or we can put on the computer. And something that's really curious about this sentence, besides British people's addiction to tea, is the fact that we use the word stick from the verb to stick. Do you know what this verb to stick means. The most common definition for it is to attach something to something else. So I might stick a poster to the wall or I may use some stickers in my notebook. And I might even say that this cake is really sticky. Today, we'll learn why and how to use this word stick instead of put and some good phrases that use stick in this way. Let's go. So first, this word stick, it's a very common word and it's actually super useful because it has a lot of different meanings. It's like, for example, the phrasal verb to stick to. That means to continue doing something that you promised to do or that you planned to do or that you have an obligation to do. Like, for example, you stick to a diet. You can also stick to the rules. That means that the rules are there and you are going to obey them. You can stick to the facts. So when you stick to the facts, you are only talking about the facts. You're not going off in a different direction talking about something else. You can even stick to someone. That means you want to be physically close to them all the time. A bit like when you stick the poster to the wall, they're really close. So when you stick to somebody, you want to stay close to them like all the time. Your boyfriend or your girlfriend, or perhaps your little dog always wants to stick with you. One phrase that you may have heard is to stick to your guns. And this basically reflects having an idea or a plan or beliefs that you don't want to change and you won't change. So you're really staying consistent with those ideas that you have, a bit like sticking to a diet or sticking to the rules. So you're staying consistent with the rules that have been put in place. But none of these examples really make you think about turning a kettle on, do they? Well, that's the curious thing. I actually couldn't find any reasons why we use the word stick instead of put. And I even asked other English teachers. <laughs> and they couldn't give me an answer either. Apparently this is just a quirk of the English language, particularly in Britain. And although there obviously will be a reason for it, I just don't know the reason for it right now. <laughs> Generally in English, to stick something somewhere means to put it somewhere, put it in a location kind of without care, carelessly without precision, you could say. So the postman, he has a lot of posts to deliver, so he just kind of sticks things through the letterbox quickly. He has a lot to deliver. So he's, he's probably working really fast without really caring if he damages the letters. He's just sticking them through the letterbox. I guess there's a sense that we're kind of doing it in a rush, quite fast because maybe there's a deadline or something like that. But basically you're doing something without too much care. So for example, your mum might say, can you just you know, stick that box over there in the corner? So you just pick up the box and you just put it over there carelessly. You don't 
care that much. It's not like it's a really important box <laughs> that requires, you know, a very delicate hand. So that's how we can remember the context for using stick instead of put. To put something somewhere without care or precision. And even though we're not 100% and even though we're not 100% sure why we started to use stick instead of put, it doesn't really matter. We can still learn how to use it. So here is the rule. Replace to put with to stick. And that's all there is to it. It's super simple. So for example, can you put the dog in the garden, please? We can simply replace put with stick. Can you stick the dog in the garden, please? So you're probably gonna put him out there without too much care. You just go on, go out, shut the door. You're just sticking him in the garden. Or another example. I'm going to put the food in the microwave. It's a bit cold. So we replace put with stick and we get, I'm going to stick the food in the microwave. It's a bit cold. So perhaps you're in a rush to eat. You only have one hour to eat because you're at work all day. You're going to stick your food in the microwave. You know, you're going to kind of throw it in there without care. You don't really care about being too precise when you put it in there. And another example, and this one is more interesting. It's snowing outside. You need to put a coat on. We can replace put with stick and we can get it's snowing outside. You need to stick a coat on. And this one is interesting because you see how I put a coat in the middle of the phrase. Well this sentence is actually using the phrasal verb to put on as in to put on clothes. That's actually a different verb to to put, even though they both use put. To put on is a phrasal verb to describe actually adding clothes to your body or turning something on slash giving something power like we discussed earlier in the video. And with to put on, you can use the whole phrase just like that in a sentence. So to put on something, so to put on a coat, for example. Or you can say it by moving the words around a little bit. So, to put something on. To put a coat on. But when we replace put on with stick, we can't really say to stick on a coat. And that's because to stick on is already a phrasal verb and it already has a different meaning which is to attach something with glue or adhesive to something else. So we have to say to stick something on because it just makes more sense and it sounds more natural. So for example, to stick a coat on. To stick the kettle on. To stick the TV on. So that's it. Let's stop there. So how common is this using to stick instead of to put? Do native speakers really say it that much? I never heard it before. That's probably what you're thinking. Well, let me tell you, yes, it's super, super common, especially in the UK or in Britain. That's why I'm teaching you it because growing up in the UK, well, specifically in England, we use stick instead of put all the time. And there's a very good reason for that. And that's because using it to stick in this way is super informal. And so we use this with our family and with our friends the majority of the time when we're speaking English in England or the United Kingdom or Britain or wherever, you do speak to your friends or to your family. And so we use to stick a lot. The thing is, if you've ever been to England or if you've ever heard this phrase, to stick the kettle on, you may ask yourself, well, what does that mean? I'm going to Google it. So you Google it. But there's no definition and that's because it's not directly translatable. In reality, it doesn't make sense. To stick normally means to fix something to something else. So when we say stick the kettle on, it really doesn't make sense to directly translate it. And in this way, just searching for what it means on Google can be really difficult. So basically just replace the word put with stick and you will sound much more like a native when you speak informally. I don't really recommend using it in a formal setting. You can, but only with specific people, depending on the relationship, depending on the level of professionalism and formality. So for now, just 
be careful and just use it informally with friends, family, and informal acquaintances. So write some examples in the comments and I'm going to correct them and tell you if it makes sense and if you wrote it correctly. You can follow me on Instagram and TikTok. It's at English with Carla. I post every day, like millions of things. <laughs> TikTok especially, you can learn something really important in a very short amount of time. So thank you so much for watching guys. I really hope that you found this video useful and I'm gonna see you in the next video. Bye.